Welcome to this week's edition of The Paint Box. I'm Jane Roy, and I'm here today with Sarah Cowling. Hey. Uh, Sarah, I actually, you know, you've been a London artist for years and years and years. 20 years. 20 years. <laughs> I, you know, but I only just met you this summer for the very first I know. time, actually. Crazy, I, right? well, Officially. I mean, I have been on the studio tour, and I've come down and seen your studio, and yeah. I've been really fascinated by what you what you do. Um, but it, it it is it's true. It's you know this is the the yeah, first time. It's a bigger so, city than we think. I you know and there's and and one of the things that really fascinated me about what you do is you you practice a type of visual art I have absolutely no experience about <laughs> no experience with. Yeah. So so watching you work was amazing. Um, Great. You know reading all of the things that you've done with regards to the studio tower. You've been you know quite instrumental of that yeah, over the years. Busy. Yeah. Um, you're part of what the the gallery group. Like yeah. you're, you're part of a number of groups where people get That's together right. and practice as well. I mean, you're yeah. you're much more part of the artistic yeah. community than <laughs> than I well, well, not than I just realized. But again, I'm new to the yeah, broader you're new artistic to the whole thing. So yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Um, I also have a collage group that people don't really know about. Okay. We're kind of exclusive. Ah, uh, so <laughs> do you want people to know about this? Well, group? yeah, I want to give them a plug. Okay. Awesome. So we call okay. ourselves the elect eclectic collage collective. Okay. And it's a group of about, at this point, about uh, not quite 20 people. Okay. We meet once a month and we make collage. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And where do you do it? Here? We do it. No. We do it at 20 people. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, you never <laughs> know. Little oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we go to one of the churches in town. We rent yeah. some space there, which, I mean, every group does this. This yeah. is how we find our space. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know, the one thing that I have been finding as... Um, as I've been going around talking to people, is how many groups there actually are there are of, of people doing things, and you know it's either the complaint, oh I can't get in because the, you know you can yeah. only handle oh, so yeah, many. Oh yeah, they've all got waiting lists. Waiting lists, and then because they've got waiting lists, then another group actually starts. So yeah. it's it it's it's really vibrant. It actually, is vibrant. Really, actually, really I always wondered if there was something here that because people come here and they turn into artists. Like what's going on in London? <laughs> <laughs> right now, though, we have one amazing work artist with us. Um, and one of the things that sort of fascinated about what me about what you do is um, you're like a mixed media artist. Would you? Yes. Like? Yeah. Because yeah. I work with paper, but I sometimes go beyond that and work with other things. Too. Yeah. So you work with paper and you do collage. I do collage. Yeah. Um, do you? So here's here's a quick question. What is collage? A well, collage is essentially when you uh, have papers that you repurpose. Yeah. or reuse or even recycle into a piece of artwork. And they may have been quite pretty before <laughs> or a work of art on their own. Uh, yeah. But you, you know, you adjust it, you rejig it, and you get something else. Um, I was speaking. I was speaking to someone who, like a mixed media artist, who said collage sometimes gets a bad rap because people tend to think of it as like scrapbooking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's not. It's, it's not. It's not. No, no, because scrapbooking is making a record of your family or an event in your family or something along that line or something in your life. Whereas this is all about um, taking the papers and creating a work of art out of them. Okay. So when you do this, and you know, I know you've, you're going to show us some things right now, which yeah. is great. But do you come with the plan, or do you basically, oh, yeah, you know, or do you it's, just jump into it and see what you have? Yeah, it just depends on what I'm doing. Sometimes I found something that really attracts me that I know I want to include in a piece of work, mm -hmm. and so I'm building it around that. Okay. Um, sometimes it just happens because things work right. Yeah. When I work on location, of course, it's the landscape I'm looking at. Yeah. And that's the influence right there. Yeah. But you're not just a landscape artist. I mean, I've walked in and, you, you know, know, and we are going to go, stuff. yeah, actually, we are going to go around yeah. in, in a few minutes to go see some of the, the work that you've done. But, like, it's much broader than just landscape. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. quite eclectic. And I actually work in several different ways. Like, so I work with landscape. Mm -hmm. I work with what what is kind of evolving into a steampunk or outsider art thing. What's what is steampunk? I've never. <laughs> I, this, oh, what is steampunk? Ask Jamie. He'll talk. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So steampunk is uh, involved with the people who do cosplay and Comic Con. Okay. And they're very interested in uh, Victoriana, Edwardian times, and a Jules Verne sort of twist to oh, it. Oh, okay. So they're looking at science fiction. They're like, looking at okay, you know, spaceships and outside stuff and. Uh, I've got some fantasy things. I've done things about women and women's situations, yeah. especially how they're portrayed in magazines. Yeah. Um, so do you? So start, yeah, I do a lot of things. <laughs> so do you? Do you start with that in idea, that intentional idea? Sometimes, like the whole yeah, series so. I did about women's issues, that was the intention. I wanted to do it that way. Yeah. Um, sometimes a series starts like those four over there because yeah. I found the 
deep sea divers and underwater things in old popular science magazines yeah. and that built from there. Yeah. Oh, wow. And so one of the things I remember you do, remember you saying is that you actually also do something daily. Yes. So, so yeah. you've got some things here this right is now. It. Yeah. Yeah. So during the weekdays, yeah. I just come down and I do a quick collage, 15, 20 minutes. I pull from a scrap pile. Yeah. So I am stuck with what's in there, you know, and you're just playing and, and I'm just, just playing. playing. And then sometimes things build out of it. It's, yeah. it's always interesting. I've been doing this since COVID, so yeah. like two, three years now. Wow. Okay. Just pull things out. What was that? That's actually beautiful. Yeah, and yeah. this one was the well, day. We'll come the and have a look later, but yeah. The day it snowed, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I found things that I thought gave me that feeling. Yeah. Um, sometimes this is a good place to try something I haven't tried before. Yeah. You know? So in so. that, it's it's kind of like your artist sketchbooks. So you're, exactly. con you're constantly practicing. Yeah. You're constantly having. And on Friday, so. I usually uh, post this on Instagram. Okay. And a group of people who waiting to see what I'm going to put out. Ah, so at the end of this, we will actually post Sarah's Instagram post so yeah, you can have a yeah. peek at it as well. Okay. Um, awesome. Maybe let's do this right now. Let's, can we walk around the sure, studio? Absolutely. I'm, so I'm going to go get the camera. We're going to walk sure. around. You're going to be the only one on it, but my voice will be there. <laughs> yeah. And then for the last 10 minutes, we'll sit down and I've got some questions sure. I kind of want to sure. ask you, but I think like even more so, this is just, this is a visual Copernicopia, yeah. In terms of what's yeah, right. I, I just, I you. just really would love to go around and, yeah, and show everybody. Talk about what I use. Yeah, that's always of interest to yeah, people too. For sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Perfect. Now we can leave these or put them aside. Oh, you're okay. playing. Okay. Yeah. Because I am playing. Yep. Because well, I didn't do Friday yet, so you know. Um, whoops. That's okay. So it this ripped, is your, but I will fix it. This is your daily painting. The yeah. daily collaging. Da daily collaging. Um, it's kind of a way to, it's a, also a jump start for me for the rest of the day because, you know, maybe I'm just not feeling it too much. Yeah. Um, so this piece that broke off, I have to put them back on. Oh, no, no. Oh, maybe right here. Is it right there? Well, it'll do. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I think uh, a really big thing too with collage is to get rid of perfectionism because it's paper. It's going to rip and tear. It's not going to do what you want it to do. Yeah. And so you just have to, something may fall off and you say, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> so are these all your daily books over here? Yes. Those ones with the spiral oh, okay. um, back. And, you know, if anybody's looking for a, a book they can work in, go to the dollar store and for about oh. four bucks, you can buy these. The paper's quite good. Yeah. And uh, and that's one thing I would say, like, if you can find something that will do what you want it to do, and it doesn't cost you a lot of money, Just that's really important because you will do more if you don't feel that, you know, that that brush cost me $100. I'm afraid to touch it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, I think um, it's I important just like to start. Paint, quality matters with paint because... Yeah, you know it's not going to be the same. But if you just want to play around a little bit, go buy some stuff and start playing around. Yeah, yeah. It, it gets it because yeah. again it gets you going. And yeah. then as you learn, you know, and you know that you're going to stick with it, and then you can start working on some yeah. better materials. Exactly. And things. Exactly. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, but even if you just want to do something as a daily practice, don't buy the like the forty dollars sketchbook because you'll just sit there paralyzed <laughs> you know <laughs> buy something cheap that if it doesn't work out you do just turn the page and go on yeah the best artistic tool is the one you have with you exactly yeah, yeah. So. use what you have yeah yeah okay well, i'm gonna follow you take okay. me wherever you'd like to go okay and like so to right, start, right so. now we're in my working area yeah and where i store a lot of my materials so i have piles and piles of books magazines they're vintage stuff yeah. some of them aren't that old um, and also all the papers that I decorate and stain and dye to use in my work. So do you actually make your own papers? I don't make the paper. I use a, what's called art tissue. Yeah. And I stain them and dye them to ah. get the effects I want. Okay. okay. Perfect. So, and, and you still have lots of paint brushes. I'm fascinated by people's well, paint brushes. Yes. So. Uh, lots of paint brushes because sometimes the staining and the dyeing requ requires many, many brushes. Yeah. Uh, but I also do paint at times. Uh, I love yeah. to paint. 
Uh, I've been known to sew <laughs> <laughs> and put that into your work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Over there, we actually have. Yeah, I the, always post. I have some of the stuff on the wall because when people come in on the studio tour, I have to use whatever wall space I have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but what's what is this right here? Are these some okay. of the storyboards? These are like storyboards. They are what's called um, accordion books, or you know, they're just they're books you make out of paper. And then you start a story going on. Oh, wow. Okay. That's and they cool. can be all kinds of things. And I do, I put the paper on, but I also sometimes steam them and dye them and make other things happen as well. Okay. I don't always know where I'm going with these. These are often kind of out of, out there. Um, this one is one of the ones that's kind of, what am I doing? I don't know. But it's Something with birds. But it's actually quite fun. Yeah. Yeah. So let's keep going around, see okay. what else you have. Okay. We'll go down the. Down to the other room, maybe. And we'll start there. Oh, There's one of the so women's amazing. series I was talking about. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Got so much, so much amazing art on the walls. Yeah, so. I have a lot of stuff on the walls, a lot of stuff on racks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? I know there are some finished pieces, but before we go to the finished pieces, yes. I'm looking over here going, you even collage doors. You collage your own house. <laughs> That's a little storage room, and I'm just like, oh, that was cool. I wanted to cover it. It was oh. just particle board and very unexciting. These pieces, are these pieces ones that you've done this year? Uh, let me see. Or, or on the uh, past couple of years? In the past couple of years, some of yeah. them aren't on. This is a location one from last year, as is that one. Yeah. This is quite a bit older. Yeah. That, is part that part of, part of the women's, women's series? Yeah, the part of the women's series. Yeah. Um, it, it's a variety of time periods, just depending... They're just up there now. It may change completely when I wow. want to change it all up. Uh, this is the one I did when I was with you that day. Yeah, in the park. That's the finished. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's the finished piece. Yeah. And then you've got these ones here. Yes, because I do like to work abstractly as well. And these are an interesting process. You work on cardboard, just a cardboard box. Okay. And you uh, paint it, put lines on it, you turn it over, and you cut it up. Oh, and in, into certain like four inch squares or whatever you decide to do. Yeah. And then you rebuild it and see what you can get. Oh, okay. It's, is it like a composition exercise? Or you it just... is. And it's just, um, it's a way of loosening up too, because you've done all this work. Yeah. And then you turn it over and you slice it up <laughs> and, <laughs> and it makes you let go. Because, and then you can see how you can still put the pieces together and make something work. So do you find that's one of the biggest difficulties you have with all of, like there's so much material you can work with. How, yeah. do, you, how do you stay loose with all of it? Well, that, that is a difficulty, yes. And you could get really, you know, you find something that's really fantastic and you kind of get stuck just using that thing oh, instead of yeah. trying other new things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's say someone wanted to start in collage. Um, Actually, I hold that thought, Jane. We're okay. going to come back to that. Okay. And because I looked over here, and obviously this is where you have some of your finished pieces. Yes, this is where I store a lot of my store. Money. But I'm looking up here going, oh, my goodness. <laughs> There's like, that's a sculpture. Yeah, a collage sculpture. that's actually, I was working with Print London yeah. uh, summer of 2019. And we were doing some printmaking, but also working with Japanese papers and other papers. Yeah. And it was three weeks, and we ended up at Satellite Gallery having an exhibit of the work, and that's one that's oh, left wow. over. Wow. And I made these amazing leaves as well, cut out of Japanese paper. It was so much fun because I got big rolls of paper, and I could use as much as I wanted. Wow. Because ordinarily, that's expensive stuff, right? And you're yeah. like, oh, maybe I shouldn't. Painters have the same problem. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't use all this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you, as a painter, when you're learning, you have to learn to let go of the cost of materials yeah. a little bit. Start pouring just, that paint out. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I always had difficulty with that at the beginning. Yeah. Um, Everybody does. Yeah. Yeah. But it's yeah. sort of the same. So if somebody wanted to start in collage, how, how would they start? How would they start? They would look for somebody like me. <laughs> oh. I would tell them what to do, maybe. Or they could go on YouTube, tons of stuff on YouTube. Yeah. Um, but I think there's some advantage to working with somebody directly because you get that hands-on. Yeah. Like, you know, YouTube, you can watch it, but can you make it do anything? Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't, I, I mean, I remember starting to learn and looking at YouTube, and there were so many artists doing their 10 minute videos yeah. on how to paint clouds or well, how to do whatever. Terrible. And some of them aren't great, but also it's difficult to find somebody 
that you can connect with, but exactly. also they teach exactly. you to paint like you. Yeah. Or like, sorry, they teach you to paint like themselves when really what you want is somebody to teach you how to do it so you yeah. can figure out how yeah. you paint. Exactly, so. exactly. So um, the other thing I think people need to keep in mind if they're going to start in collage is everything that you do in painting. So your use of color, value, um, contrast, you have to use all those things to mm -hmm. get a successful collage. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen just because you slap the paper down. Okay. All those rules that are in art yeah. are still there. Yeah. And then when you know them really well, you can start breaking some of them. Wow. Yeah. So what, what brought you to collage? Why collage? This is a good question. Right. I started working with art. Yeah. So what happened first was we moved here to London. Yeah. I've been a teacher in the Toronto area. Were you an art teacher? Or no, you... kindergarten. Kinder... <laughs> kindergarten teacher. So wow. maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Anyway, um, we I couldn't get a job in teaching in that point. There was teachers. They had an abundance of teachers. Oh, okay. And so I started at Museum London doing tours because at least I was working with kids. Yeah. You know. And then I thought, maybe I should find out more about this. My background is history and philosophy, yeah. not art. And so I went to St. Patrick's Adult Education and I did the 11 and 12 art program. Wow. Okay. Um, because I came from a rural school and there was no arts. There was just home ec shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so that was typical. And uh, that was a great introduction because I got to try all the different mediums and all the different ways of working. Mm -hmm. And I kind of came into it that way. Mm -hmm. And then I just, it just kind of blossomed from there. Mm -hmm. I do think it might be attached to the fact that I quilted at one time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I love jigsaw puzzles. Oh, okay. Because there's the same thing and there's the whole search for the materials that yeah. is really appealing to people who like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Except uh, quilting though, you are creating a pattern yeah. yourself whereas jigsaw puzzles you're you're creating yes. you're following a pattern but so. there is that whole like where do i find the piece that fits here that makes it work right that's what's happening oh there. wow okay yeah. that's interesting and so do you know when you're done what what when just um, when it feels right or yes when so and and i usually i work on something and i walk away for a day or so and then i come back i usually have five or six things going on so that i can walk away from a piece and look and go back and look at it and say so does this work or does it not work mm -hmm. yeah so if you go into my studio, mm -hmm. there is a whole, there's a, there's a number of racks with unfinished work mm -hmm. because I didn't know yeah. quite what to do with them. Yeah. I was oil painting, waiting for them, for them to dry. And then I went into the next yeah. one. But I mean, this impresses me that this is pretty well all finished. This is fin what so I consider finished up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even though I might go in later and say, okay, you've been sitting around. I love you, but nobody else does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if it's not finished, it stays in the work area. Yeah. Till That's I'm satisfied just, with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So can we go back to the work here? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, because I, I, I'm so fascinated by this. There's so many ideas in this work here. Is this, this is like an idea board. It's an idea board or, or things that are matter to me that I want to hang on to. Um, in my mind, get inspired. Yeah, or maybe that I'm like, you know, my square card. I can find it quickly, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, so do you ever find yourself facing um, like not writer's block, but, you know, pay, um, collage not, block? Not, not really. Um, if I do, I pick out a bunch of stuff and I start cutting things out. Yeah. And that usually gets me beyond it. Oh, okay. And it gives me a supply. Or I paint a bunch of papers. Yeah. Which maybe I should pull some of those out. Sure. Yeah, yeah. that'd be great. Because they might be of interest. While she's doing that, I'm just going to do a quick pan around sure. this studio. There we go. Here's some papers. That's the one thing I love about the studio, too, is you actually get to go in to see studios and you get yes. to see where people do their work yes um I, I usually set up a little spot on the table for kids with a bunch of little collage bits that they can work with yeah so here are some of the tissue papers that i do that you have created yeah wow. and i use uh, acrylic acrylic usually the fluid paints yeah. and um, different processes to get different looks i just learned recently about a thing called a jelly Oh, I have one here somewhere. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like printmaking, isn't it? Yes, in Almost. fact. Hmm. Or you can transfer over images and all sorts of different these things. Are, well, you can, yeah, but these are all jelly prints I made this week, actually. Oh, wow, okay. And um, looking for different kinds of color combinations and textures oh, and wow. things to happen okay. with it. Okay. It's a real experiment because you never know what you're going to get. Just like printmaking, you never know. That's beautiful. It's great for water or something, you know. Yeah. And and one thing with collage, like you've got the whole piece, but you're only going to tear out a little piece. Yeah. And it's going to completely change when you do that. But it, the colors can be anything, really. You can go with all kinds of colors. 
and you never know what you're going to need. Some are more, this is really translucent. You can actually see the light through it a yeah. bit. And whereas this piece is a little more, a little more opaque. opaque. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's all wow. kinds of different processes to get so things. I do remember when I when I came to visit you when you mm -hmm. were working on site when you were doing the plein air is that you had all these bags, and you had organized them by color so you yeah. could find your things easily. Yes, uh, you know, in many ways, if you're not organized doing this, I can just imagine how yeah. difficult it and is. Yes, there's a bit of disorganization happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, there almost ha there almost has to be because that's yeah. where the play comes from, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. But and sometimes you know, I have this idea I'm going to use such and such, and then when I get there, it's like, nope, it's not working. Ah, okay. Move on. Move on. So collage, you work on a flat space here. Yes. And then behind you, you have an easel. Is that where you paint and then do collage afterwards? Um, or is that yeah, just for some, inspiration? Well, or? it depends. I usually paint on the easel. Yeah. The collage tends to be flat. Yeah. Um, although I, I will put something up and just light, lightly tack it on so I can see if it's working. Okay. Yeah. Especially a larger piece. I might have to do that to make okay. it work. That's amazing. Okay. Can we sit down for a bit more? Yeah. I yeah. love your studio. Again, it's there's so many ideas here and there's yeah. so many things to work with. I think I think you're right. It'd be tough to get a little bit of blocked here. Yeah. You know, you come yeah. in and you just go to I it. I have so. a ton of ideas. <laughs> yeah. Um but this this now is a little bit of a part where I'd like to just ask you a few questions. Sure. Some of these questions are big and some of these questions are small. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um the very first question is so what is art? That's a big question. That's a huge <laughs> question. I know, but I'm looking at your shirt going. Art matters. I'm going to ask you about that later. But, yeah. But like, so what's art? Um, or what's art to you? Art to me is an expression of an emotion or a feeling, mm -hmm. um, and it might come through the landscape. If you, you see the landscape and it affects you in a certain way, it might come through a more clearly what looks like an emotional thing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if there's a person in it or an animal, mm -hmm. that might you know draw people there but, but to me art is anything that expresses your ideas and your thoughts and your feelings okay and why does it matter why, does why, it matter? why art, art matters art yeah. matters to me because if i don't do art i'm not a, as nice a person <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's the first time i've heard that answer um yeah. but it's but really i get antsy if i haven't had a chance even on our trip i will be taking stuff with me to do yeah so when you go on your trip with your like a family vacation yeah, you know, yeah. i always have stuff yeah. to do and so, you know, that, I know we joke about it a little bit in terms of, but it does speak to the mental health, particularly of, of individuals and people that if we're not necessarily creating, yes. you know, for you, it comes out in antsiness and others, it comes out in stress and all sorts of different yeah. things. So, yeah. so that art matters individually, but how does art matter, let's say, collectively? Collectively, I think um, an artist can... Uh, evoke feelings in other people mm -hmm. um, or it could be themes or ideas like I'm, I'm just thinking right now we've got lots of war issues and stuff a lot of artists that's what they want to go to yep. and maybe that helps explain things to other people or give them an idea of what could happen that's not my focus usually but I see a lot of artists do it that way yeah Okay. Yeah. So they, they take social issues and they make yeah. commentary on it. Um, this is uh, obviously a bit of an influence question, but if you were to have dinner with any artist living or dead, who would you have? Mm. Can I have more than one? Of course you can. There's no, way, there's no correct answer to any okay. of these questions. So I think Monet, because Monet is Monet. <laughs> How can we say no to him? Um, right now, Cezanne, because I'm interested in the south of France. Yeah. Uh, Rothko, yeah, Mark Rothko, yeah, yeah, for sure. And and why Mark Rothko? And because of the way he expresses emotion through color, yeah, and that's all he does. Yeah, you know, he, he doesn't put a big thing exploding or something, but you see right away. Yeah, yeah, how he was feeling when he did it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he kind of juxtaposed uh, like colors together. It was yeah. it seemed to be very simple, but yeah, and I then, don't think I could do it because of the collage. I'd say Rauschenberg. But he did really mixed media stuff because yeah. he'd like take a big canvas tent and put it in there or something. Wow. Okay. Um, and Hamilton, who is Hamilton? I've never Richard heard. Hamilton. Richard Hamilton. Okay. He did um, strictly magazine collages, and it's really quite interesting what oh, he did okay. with magazines. Okay. He was one of the first to kind of do that in the sixties. Yeah. Um, and so you're having dinner around. You're sitting around. Yeah. You know, what would you hope the conversation would be? Or you would just let uh, it go. I think that I'd like them to talk about what they thought their influences were. Where they thought they were misunderstood, yeah, could be interesting. Uh, 
what they thought of their materials and, and are they excited by what they see now? Because yeah. I think we have more options now. Yeah. Yeah. And what gossip they would have yeah. about the yeah. people around them is always <laughs> be kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. Which leads to another question. Um, if there was a myth that you would like mm. to, like it, whether it's a myth, an artistic myth or some other kind of myth mm -hmm. or a myth about collage, if there was one thing you'd like to combat or say, you know, what would that be? Well, I guess the thing I've come up against the most is people just saying to me, but you're just cutting things out. You're not really doing anything. Oh, okay. And, really? you know, I, and, and that you're cheating because, you know, you cut out a figure or something. Um, but a, a lot of my really? work, okay. I do that, but a lot of my work is much more abstract and it's different. I'm just thinking something like these guys. Yeah. It's all about color here. Yeah. And lightness and darkness huh. too. Um, but you know, there's, there's more to it and there's more than just, okay. So this one, this was in Italy. Yeah. So let's have a, let's yeah. have a peek at this. So we okay. were in a churchyard. Yeah. With a church with a dome there and those nice tall trees they have. Um, but you know, I took things that were mine, mine in, in that I painted them and also magazine type stuff. And I created the whole scene oh, and okay. You know, that was just as hard as painting it. <laughs> I, you know what? Sometimes maybe even harder. Um, yeah. I, I think I think that's true. It speaks, it, to some degree, speaks to the myth that uh, abstract is one of the easiest forms, and it's not. But painting is a skill. Yes. And you can learn yeah. how to. So when they talk about cheating or doing whatever, yeah. I mean, all of us can learn what yeah. those those cheats are. Yeah. It's like learning to draw. There are the the masters had cheats. Which, of course they did. Which Ways taught them to how to view it, to get perspective right, yep. everything. Yep. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, we all but learn it's not cheating. certain, it's tr actually, it's, certain it's, tricks, I'll yeah. call them, to yeah. make it work for us. I think the bad thing is, is when you just repeat that time after time after time and you never grow with that. Right. You don't take, you just keep copying people as opposed yeah. to learning your own expression. Yeah. yeah. What is success? Mm. Oh, what is success? I think the most important type of success for me because there's more than one type. Oh, there's, for you, I welcome to that, whichever way you would yeah. like. Um, for me, is when I finish something and I think, okay, that's it. It's really, that's exactly what I wanted it yeah. to do. It's saying what I want it to say. Yeah. It, there's no blips or anything that I'm worried about that I yeah. don't like. What is the thing that you enjoy doing the most? I think the assembling of everything. You know, once I've collected all, well, the hunt for the stuff is fun. Yeah. 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 And the making of the papers, but when it actually comes to the best part is when I start getting it all together and I'm making it It's kind it of like work. a daily thing when you're putting yeah, it together. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's, that's the part I really enjoy. Yeah. Which is kind of the plane, isn't it? Yeah, it yeah. is the plane. Which yeah. is kind of cool. So, well, th um, thank you, Sarah. Thanks oh, for welcome. this. You know, it's uh, it's been, again, great getting to know you from all those other aspects. I really find it fascinating in terms of what you do. Um, because I can't do it. Uh, so <laughs> I should, you quick. Well, sure you, you know what? Actually, that I should I should change that because I think that's true. We we uh, immediately go to I can't do that when it actually is I couldn't I can't do that yet or I've never tried it in terms or of or maybe it doesn't interest me. Yeah, or you know, maybe it's just people, it's not my thing. They're just like yeah, no, I don't really want to do that. Yeah, um, you know that's how I feel about watercolor sometimes. <laughs> it's the hardest thing to do. It's true, but I think each of us, you know, much like they say about food, mm -hmm. you should always try something Absolutely. to decide whether yeah. you actually like it. And it has its place. Like yeah. I'm saying watercolors, but if I'm traveling, it'll be watercolors yeah. because carrying all those paints and glues and everything is a bit much. Yep. Yeah, but it's sort of the same thing. At least come and try. So on the studio tour, come and try. Yeah. Westland Gallery, come and Absolutely. try. Absolutely. In terms of those Check things, their website so. if you're interested in any classes because yeah. they've got all kinds of fun things going on. For sure. So thank you, Sarah. Thank you. And thank you. <laughs>